Rich Lund, and welcome to another episode of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. Who doesn't like blowing bubbles? But have you ever blown an anti-bubble? Now, I'm not talking about blowing a bubble out of antimatter that could collide with a regular bubble, annihilating it with a huge discharge of energy. That'd be pretty cool, though. No, I mean an anti-bubble, which is the reverse concept of a regular bubble. A regular bubble is a thin membrane of soapy water. It has air on the interior of it and air on the exterior of it. Well, an anti-bubble is the exact opposite of that. It's a thin membrane of air that has soap water solution on the interior and on the exterior of it. And visually, they're a pretty awesome thing to observe. The idea of the anti-bubble is actually pretty recent, and it wasn't documented and scientifically described until 2003, even though people have probably been accidentally making them ever since doing the dishes has been a thing. I hadn't even heard of them until a foreign exchange student I had introduced me to the concept last year. What up, Matsma? Anti-bubbles are an excellent example of how certain territory in science that seems very familiar still has surprises to offer us. So how can you make them at home? Well, from my experience with anti-bubbles, I describe it kind of like chess. It's easy to learn how to do it, but it can be challenging and takes a lot of practice to master. If you try this out, you'll get success, I promise. But it's going to take a while for you to get the hang of it to where you can do it consistently. To make some anti-bubbles at home, all you truly need is water, dish soap, and a straw. That's really it. Some sources recommend that you get something to squirt water with, like an eyedropper or a condiment squeeze bottle. And I tried both of those, but truly, my results were better just from using the straw. Now, some other optional materials that we'll be using to make things a little bit more fun include some food coloring so you can see them better, and some corn syrup to get them to last a bit longer. You'll see why. And of course, you're going to need some container to do this in, and certainly you want it to be clear. But also, the larger it is, the easier it'll be to observe them. Let's get to it. First, you're going to need to make a soap water solution. And let me stress this, you do not need that much soap. Just a little bit of dish soap and you're good to go. Without any soap, regular water attracts itself too quickly to ever really let an anti-bubble form. But too much soap and that thin membrane of air also has trouble being established. You gotta find the sweet spot. You'll know that you have the right soap content if you sprinkle a little bit of the soap solution up at the surface and these little tiny beads of water are forming. These little beads are really the start of an anti-bubble, it's just one that hasn't been submerged yet into the solution. Now, do you remember as a kid, before you knew much about air pressure, how magical it seemed to be able to take a straw, and as long as you put your finger over the top of it, any liquid that was in that straw would not be able to fall down. The liquid would stay in there until you removed your finger. Well, using a straw in this way is going to be our delivery technique for dropping some of the solution onto the surface and forming the anti-bubbles. Our goal is going to be to drop some of the solution onto the surface in order to form some of those water beads we saw earlier. Once those start forming, Dropping more solution not only lets them get larger, but also the force of the falling water pushes that bead down below the surface. If done correctly, air that's trapped underneath that bead and on the sides of that bead gets pinched off by the top of the solution, and voila, you have brought an anti-bubble into this world. But it's a bit tricky. So many variables affect your success. The angle at which the water hits the surface seems to matter. Also, the speed at which you're delivering the water to the surface seems to have a big role. Too fast or too slow, and the anti-bubble has trouble forming. And the third factor I noticed that seemed to play a big part in this was how close to the surface of the water you were delivering the solution. Just slightly above the surface seemed to get me the best results. Now, your anti-bubbles won't really last that long, and the exact reason why is still being researched. But the leading idea currently is that the thin membrane of air well, that air is constantly dissolving into both the soap on the outside and on the inside of the antibubble. As that air dissolves, the thin membrane gets thinner and thinner and thinner until eventually it closes off and the antibubble pops. And this is very similar to how a regular bubble pops too. That thin membrane of soapy water is constantly evaporating into the air. To convince any doubters though that you show this to that these really are antibubbles, well, that's what the food coloring is for. Add some food coloring to a separate soap solution that you've already tested to make sure it is anti-bubble worthy. Now, a successful anti-bubble of the colored solution in the clear solution will be a lot easier to see. And it's also some very strong evidence that that interior of the anti-bubble truly is liquid. Play around with the different colors, see what kind of fun you can have. Now, these little buggers are so adorable, you might want to keep them around a little bit longer than how long they usually last, which isn't that long at all. 
The number one threat to an anti-bubble seems to be reaching the top of the solution. If we could just get them to not float up, well, then they last a lot longer. And that takes us back to density. That's where the corn syrup comes in. Mix in some corn syrup into the soap solution that is your source for the anti-bubbles. And as with everything else we've been using, don't use too much because too much of this will interfere with how well an anti-bubble can form. If you do it this way, they'll be much longer lived. Try timing your anti-bubbles and see how long you can actually get them to last. I was able to get one to last for 5 minutes and 43 seconds. So hey, what'd you think? Tell us about your success in the comments below. And if you felt like this Indie Labs was worthy, give it that thumbs up like. We always appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet because more Indie Labs are already in the works. I'm Rich Lund and I'll see you next time Indie Labbers. Indie Dabbers?